Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. One question I often receive from photographers is them asking me how to go about blurring out the background in post. Often they have an image such as this. They took a photo of a subject and they used a relatively small aperture, which gave them a lot of depth of field. So the scene is in focus from the very front all the way through the back, but they want to emulate a wider open aperture that would of course given them a shallower depth of field and would have resulted in the background being more blurred out. Now you could do that in Photoshop. I'm going to demonstrate it with this image. Now your subject doesn't have to be a person. It could be anything really. The whole idea here is you want to isolate the subject by blurring that which is behind the subject. Now to do that in Photoshop, load the image in there, and the first thing to do is to duplicate the background layer by hitting Command or Control J on your computer. Once you have this duplicate layer, now we want to make a selection. You want to start out by selecting the subject. To do that, get a selection tool by hitting the W key on your keyboard. Now the W key is a shortcut for three different selection tools. If we look over here at the tool panel, you'll see that in this little cubby of selection tools, if I click with the left mouse button and hold it, there's three different tools there. It really, at this point, doesn't matter which tool you have selected. Just hit W on your keyboard to select any of those three tools, then go up to Select Subject. And when you do that, Photoshop will, tr will try to determine what the subject of the image is and select it. Now, as you look at it, at first glance, it looks pretty good. But if we look a little closer, it didn't select the entire stool that she's sitting on, and it didn't select part of her sneaker. So now we need to get a very specific selection tool. We need the quick selection tool. So if you click with the left mouse, left mouse button and hold, you want that tool right in the middle here, quick selection tool. By default, it should be on the middle brush, which is the plus brush. And if you look at the selection tool itself, You'll see there's a tiny little plus sign in the middle. That means we're going to add to the selection. Now you can make the brush bigger with the right bracket key, smaller with the left, and get a size that fits your situation and then try to just select what isn't selected by just clicking and drawing on it. And you can see I selected the rest of the stool. Now I need to select that part of her sneaker that isn't selected. So I'm gonna get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. Then I'm going to try to very carefully just kind of skim on the outside of her sneaker to try to get a better selection. And what may happen is you may over select like I just did. If that happens, then you're going to need the minus brush. But instead of going up here and clicking on the minus brush, simply hold in the alt or option key on your keyboard and you'll get that minus brush. Just keep holding in that alt or option key and, and deselect what got selected. Then come back with that plus brush by letting go of that Alt Option key and try to reselect what you need to select. What you'll find is uh, as you do this, you select, deselect, select, deselect. Photoshop will start to get better at finding, in this case, the edge of her sneaker. It kind of gets refined. Oops, I accidentally had it selected when I wanted to deselect. If you want to undo something, hit Command or Control Z as in zebra, and you'll undo it. Now I'll hold that Alt Option key in here and try to deselect part of her sneaker there. Try to select a little more there. It looks pretty good. You don't have to be precise. This selection that we're doing right now doesn't have to be as precise as a selection that you might be doing for a cutout. For example, if I wanted to cut her out of this scene and drop her into a different scene, that type of selection has to be more precise. This selection doesn't have to be as exact, but it looks pretty good at this point. Uh, her uh, right shoulder here isn't selected right, so I'm just going to come up here and try to fix that a little bit. Maybe down in here a little bit. And that doesn't look too bad right there. All right, now we want to just refine the selection. So go up here to Select and Mask. Click that button, and you'll see that I have it set up at the moment, so it's showing me a black background. That means Whatever isn't selected is black. What is selected is being shown. So I have the model selected. Now there's different views. The black view might not always be the best view for what you're trying to select. 
So click this little drop down and you can see there's a number of different ones. Onion skin, which doesn't work well here. Marching ants is what we just had. Overlay, which I often like to use. The black, on white, and so on. You could go through these and see what works best for you. Now be, by default, when you choose on black or the overlay, uh, this opacity slider will be at 50. So you may want to just boost that up so you could better see the edges. Now what we'll do is we're going to just refine the selection slightly. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, so we don't have to go crazy here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a tool over here on the left. This third brush from the top is a normal brush. You either brush in the selection or brush out of the selection. We're going to go to the minus brush and we're going to brush out the selection. So we're going to get rid of all this stuff up here that's kind of making it kind of noisy around her hair. and. Yeah, that's it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the plus brush now, and I'm going to get a better selection of her sneaker by just kind of brushing in the edge of her sneaker a little better. Then what I can do now is I could go to the second brush. The second brush from the top is the refine edge brush tool. What this brush does is just wherever you brush on an edge, it will make Photoshop look at that edge and try to get a better selection. So if I come in here and I get a right, hit the right bracket key to make it a little larger, and I just go along the edge of her sneaker here, maybe I could get a better edge. Maybe not though, and you could see how it messed it up. So I could hit Command Z to undo that. Um, so you could just try, I mean, see how it goes. It's messing it up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Again, it doesn't have to be an exact selection, so we're not going to lose a lot of sleep over this. So what I'll do is I'll get a smaller quick selection brush, or refine edge brush, I'm sorry, and then we'll come in here and clean up that little edge right there. That worked out pretty good. So her sneaker's a little funky. We'll fix that up. I'll get the minus brush, and I'll just try my best to clean that up a little bit. I mean, again, we don't have to get too crazy here. If I was going to be clipping her out to put her in a different scene, I would have to do a better selection of her sneaker. But this isn't bad at all. So I, I think this is good. Now we have her selected, but we actually want to blur out the background. So what we really want to do is have the background selected, not the subject, not the model. To like invert the selection over here on the right, there's a little invert button. Just click on that and you can see now everything that's showing is selected. What's blacked out isn't selected. So we have the background selected now. We're going to output it to a selection and click OK. Now you'll notice we have the marching ants again on that top layer and the marching ants go around the outside of the model and around the boundaries of the image. So that is indicating that the background is selected. Now anything I do to the image from this point or this layer from this point on will only be affected or be affecting what is selected. Let me show you. We want to add blur to this. We want to add lens blur. So we're going to go up to filter down to blur and then down to lens blur. Now lens blur is uh, uses a lot of computer resources and if you're using an older computer you may find that lens blur is really a dog. It doesn't work quickly. If that's the case instead of using lens blur try Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur will give you a similar effect and it works well and it doesn't use as many computer resources so it should work a little more smoother on older computers. But I'm going to use Lens Blur. We'll go there. And you can see it opens up this dialog box. And even on my computer, which is pretty fast, it's kind of slow. And you can see already it added a kind of a default amount of blur to the image. And you can see that it's blurred out that background. Now there's a couple um, things we should go over here on the right-hand panel. First of all, depth map. We're not using a depth map. Um, that's another file that shows depth in the image that kind of gives an indication of what the depth is of the image, that she's more foreground, the bookshelves are more background, and so on. So we're not using that. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to uh, simulate the type of iris that the aperture blades are inside of a lens. You have a hexagon, octagon, a triangle. Each will give you a slightly different type of blur. And if there's any specular highlights in the image, for example, if this was an outdoor scene and there were street lights in the back, these different types of blades would look, the blur would look different more noticeably than they will on an image like this. So you could try different ones and see if it does anything. In this scene, 
it's really not going to do too much. Now, the radius is the amount of blur. If I go up, you could see once it renders that it just blurs it out more. If I go to the left, it blurs it out less. So you can see how it's it's kind of slow, right? It is kind of a, a dog as far as using a lot of computer resources. Um, blade curvature, again, on this image, it's not going to do that much. This will happen more when you have a specular highlight in there. Rotation of those blades also might affect it. Uh, specular highlights, if you did have, say, a street light in the image, the brightness of those specular highlights get affected here. See, it's really not doing anything on this image at all. And then this final part, you could add noise to the background if you wanted to. And you could go, you could see how it adds noise, uniform or Gaussian noise. You can see how the distribution of the noise. Monochromatic, you can see right now those, uh, those little like noise speckles, spectacles, speckles are colorful. If you click here, they'll be more monochrome. Now, I'm not adding any noise at all to the background here. I just want to blur it out. So we're just going to give it a more natural looking blur. Nothing too crazy. Maybe something like this. All right. So it doesn't look too bad. She's in focus. Uh, maybe a little bit less. It doesn't look quite right. Right. So something like that. So pretty good. I think we'll go OK. All right. Now we have the selection still. It stayed there. We could get rid of that selection by hitting Commander Control D. That stands for deselect. Now, if I do a before after, there's before and there's after, before, after. You can see now there is one thing that I want to fix. Um, it She's pretty forward, but this couch, part of it would be in focus. Uh, this part probably equivalent to maybe where her foot is. So right in here would probably be in focus. So what I want to do is I want to use a mask to mask out the blur there and allow some of this more in focus area to come through. So to do that, I'll go down here to the bottom in the mask uh, icon right here. Just click on that and it will add a mask to that layer. Now the mask is white, so it's not doing anything. It's letting that layer be up here fully. To uh, get rid of the blur, what we need to do is paint in black on the mask with a brush. Get a brush tool, hit the B key, B for brush on your keyboard. Now over here on the left, you have some color swatches. By default, they should look black and white like this. If you don't have the default color swatches, hit the D key on your keyboard. That will give you the default white and black or black and white swatches. We need the black to be the foreground color because I mentioned we need to paint in black. So hit the X key on your keyboard so the black is the foreground color. Now, what we need to do, don't just get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key and then come in here and just paint like that. Like that looks horrible, right? So we're going to undo that by hitting Commander Control Z as in Zebra. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a very, very soft brush, as soft as possible, so hardness will be at zero. We also want the opacity real low. So you could go to this drop down and bring it down to like 10%. What you want to do is build up and add to the effect. Now I mentioned probably in here, like we'll be in focus. So we're going to just slowly be adding so it's not as blurry in this area here. Like that. So it just looks a little more natural. So it looks like it's the way it should be, maybe. And we'll just come in like that. Now we'll do a before after. There's before and there's after. So you can come in here and just add to it. There's before and there's after. So you can see how I think it looks a little more natural now because you have this part of the couch about equivalent to where her foot is. Her foot is in focus. You have that in focus as well. So there's before and there's after. And that's really all it is uh, to it. Very easily done. I'll show you the mask. I'm going to hold the option key on my Mac. It's Alt on a PC. And you can see that where I painted. It just has this gray blotch there that's allowing the background layer to come through where the background layer, of course, is in focus. It's allowing part of it to come through so to give us a better look, better, more realistic look. So that's it. That's how you would go about blurring out a background in Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.